Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, uh, last last uh, month, I preached on 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 to 31. Saying that the church is the body of God, of Christ, and we are to we together work work together, and every part of the member works together. Everybody is somebody. Can you remember that? Everybody is somebody in the church, and together we grow. Sometimes together we fail. We are encouraged to build the church together. And we have to build muscles together so that we could, what? We, if, if you are strong, if our body, the physical body is strong, then we can do whatever we should do for the glory of God. And that's, that, that's the message on 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 to 31. And, and together we love each other. Together we have to care for one another. Together we help one another. Together we mold each other. And let us, uh, uh, so building together a strong church, a strong community. And we have three points. If you remember those three points. That is, let us value the team spirit, right? Value the team, team spirit. It's like a basketball team. Now, uh, n nowadays, this, this past days, wow, it's a heated argument at Facebook. Golden State Warriors and Cavaliers, oh my, <laughs> right? The Warriors and the Cavaliers. I know some of you are with the Warriors, some of you with the Cavaliers. Warriors, huh? Praise God. And, and in basketball... Well, I, I, that's my first sport when I was a kid. I, I'm just 10 years old, and I, I'm playing basketball. And in basketball, uh, we, we need to you know, we have different roles, right? Well, this guy knows, Nim, Brother Nimrod knows. Uh, in basketball, we have different roles. You have a, a guard, a point guard, a forward, a power forward, a center. You have to... To be there in, in your role. And you, but you have to know that if you're a center, you have to really know who are the who are this, this power guard is. You have to know who the shooters are. You're only there to mostly to get the rebound and pass it to anyone who is free. Are the three points three point three point shot. Amen. So uh, in, in if you if they work together then they're going to win but if you just do everything you want to do on your own you you're not going to win hey, but they work together the same thing with the church value the team spirit and val and second is value the importance of uh, uh, in the body of Christ your importance and there are two things that I, I said. And the first one is do not overestimate your importance. Your, 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 what, you have, what you are in the body of Christ. No one is better than the other. Amen. Amen. No one is better than the other. And, th and third, do not underestimate your importance. Do not belittle yourself. Do not say, ah, I'm just uh, this guy and I'm, you know, I, I'm not really important in the church. You are important. You are important. But on this, on this, on this uh, um, message last month, I want to share to you, I want to draw your attention to the parable of the talents. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 and 30, we see there that we need to serve God with our talents. And I just want to read Matthew 25, 
14 up to 30. It says, again, now I, I'm going to show you the, uh, on, on my conclusion about that word again. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. To the one he gave five talents of money, to another two talents, and to another one talent, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five talents went, to one, went at once and put his money to work and gained five more. So also the one with two talents gained two more. But the man who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted, you entrusted me with five talents. See, I have gained five more. His master, his master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two talents also came. Master, he said, You entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more. The master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. It will be, I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then, the man who had received that one talent came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man. Harvesting where you have not sown. And gathering where you have not scattered seed. So, I was afraid and went out and hid the talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. I'm giving it back to you. His master replied, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gathered where I have not scattered seed. Well then, you should have put my money on, the, uh, on deposit with the bankers so that when I return I would have received it back with interest take the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten talents for everyone and Jesus said for everyone who has who has will be given more and will have an abundance whoever does not have even what he has will be taken from him and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I want to share to you some lessons from this parable. The parable of the talents. Well, in the last, in the last point of, of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 12 to 30, 30 that I, I preach on last month is do not underestimate your, you, your ability, what you have. Do not underestimate. Now, there are five things, or there are a few things that I want to share to you. I think there are five, but I'll just share to you three. Because as I have been trying to uh, do this uh, message, I think, oops, it's getting long. I don't want to get, get this long again and so that we would have time to pray. First, lesson. We are all given talents according to our ability. We are all given talents according to our ability. It says here in, in verse, uh, I'll read verse 14 and 15, first part of 15. 
Again, it will be like a man going to the journey who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. To the one he gave five, to the one he gave two, and to the other he, he gave one. According, each according to his ability. Now, we are go given the talent according to our own ability. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, every, it, says there, it shows there that every believer is a member of the body of Christ. Some are the feet, some are eyes, nose, or any finger, or any, any part of the body. When we receive Jesus Christ, we are integrated into the body of Christ. When you begin to be part of a church, you begin to be a part of the body of Christ. And I tell you this, there's no such Christian that, that you could say, I'm a Christian, but they don't belong to a particular church. Now listen to this. It's very important for us to know that we need to belong to a particular church. To be part of the ministry. To, to be interwoven to the work of the church. Amen. Now, that's in 1 Corinthians 12. Now, from the time you, you, you gave your life to Jesus and you're coming to, that fe to a fellowship like this of believers, you're becoming a part of the body of Christ, which is the church. You begin to develop your place in the body. You begin to, uh, to uh, God begins to draw you into a service into something that you want to do for the church. Now, some of us here, when, when, when you have begun to come here, and I know a, a person here, that when he, she, she came, she would just come here and, and just sit down. But later on, he says, oh, I need to, uh, I need to share. I, need, I would bring my friends here. I would share. I, I would uh, tell them to come. Now, he had, she, she began to, to, to uh, be a part of, of this church. And then he said, if you need something, uh, cleaning or what, just tell me and I will come. So when, he, when we would say she wants to clean, wow, I love it, I love it, I'll come, I'll come. So he, she begins to be part of the church. Amen. What can I do to help the ministry. What can I do to serve the church? That's something that we need to ask. The call to serve. God begins to show us what we have. Maybe our talents. Maybe our gifts. God gives us talents to use according to our ability. Now listen to this. According to our ability. It says here, God gives talents five to one according to his ability, to their abilities of these three servants. God doesn't give us something that we cannot handle. Amen. Amen. God gives us ministry. God gives us, uh, us a talent so that, so that we can use it for his glory. God can use you what you have now. What do you have now? What can you do now? Can you preach? Can you share? Can, can, can you preach like Duane? I cannot preach like Duane. He cannot preach like me too. At this point, maybe she can. He can. <laughs> but uh, we have different talents that God gives. What is your talent? Hello? You think of what is your talent? What do you have now? What can you do? Yeah. Well, I'll give an example. What do you have in your hand? When God called Moses, Moses was considered as the meekest man who will ever live here on earth. 
When Moses was called by God, he said, I cannot speak. I, do, I cannot. Uh, how can I I'll go to Pharaoh and tell him I cannot do that? I don't have a speech. I, I, I would tremble when I, I speak. Well, I, I remember when I first went to Bible school, I cannot, I cannot stand in front of the congregation. So I said, okay, I'll just... I'll just, I'll just, uh, I'll just take church music <laughs> because in music, well, I, I don't have to preach. <laughs> I don't have to preach, so I do church music. But I cannot get away from what God wants me to uh, to do. Amen. Hey, I can't get away because God, God just showed me. Hey, after the three years in music, music in 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 the Bible school. God, God put me again into the seminary. Uh, uh, no, because I want you to do this. And so, okay, God, okay, I'll be a teacher. No, a teacher in, in a classroom. But then being a teacher, God doesn't really want that. And suddenly, here I am, a pastor. I don't, I don't want to be a pastor. God uses us. God gives us what we have. The calling Moses is that, I cannot do it. I cannot do it. But God said, what is that in your hand? A staff. Just a staff. Okay. Put it down. He put it down and it became a snake. Oops. You see? God said, I'm going to use you with that staff. And get that staff on the tail. And it became a rod again. It became a staff again. And with that staff, that's where God used him. He smote the uh, river in Egypt and it became blood. The ten plagues, most of the ten plagues in, in Egypt was because of his staff. When they went out of Israel, of, of the bondage of Egypt. Praise God. Hallelujah. When Israel went out the, in, in Egypt. That staff saved Israel to escape the Egyptian army that are following them. On that Red Sea. God said. Hey what are you doing Moses. Use your staff. Smite the, 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 the Red Sea. And it will be divided. And it did. That staff. Hello. And there were. There, there were no, no, no water. In the wilderness. And God said hey smite that rock. With your staff. Smote that rock and water flowed. What do you have? What do you have in your hand? What, what can you do? That simple thing that you have in you, God can use it. Amen. God can use it. Amen. Amen. That simple thing that you have, the talent that you have, He can use it. And God wants that you use it. Another one is David. David as a young boy. Here comes Goliath. And what does David had? Is he an ar he, is he a, 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 a army or a, a good warrior with, with those swords or sword or what? No. He's, he just had a slingshot, a sling. And that's all he had when he was a young boy. And he defeated Goliath with that. Amen. Now, simple. What do you have? What do you have? What is your talent? Well, another one. Paul. In the New Testament. Well, Paul was the greatest apostle of all times. 
one of the greatest writer of, of most of the books in the New Testament. And we learn a lot. We, 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 can, we can extract a lot of truth out of Paul's writings. Why? God used his talent. Paul was an educated man. Educated in the law. And God used that education to show and to explain what salvation is all about. He explained it, how, how, what, what the Old Testament had said and how this Old Testament was uh, put into the New Testament, how, how it was fulfilled in the New Testament through Jesus Christ. Because he learned that throughout his life when he was a Pharisee. God, God can use that. God can use even those things that you have before you were not yet an unbeliever. Hello? Hello? What, what you have acquired when you are still not an unbeliever, God can use it for his glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Like Paul. That's why Paul has become so effective in the ministry so effective in the work of the Lord. He planted a lot of churches because he knew he had a background of that he is, he is the apostle to the Gentiles. He has a background. Why? Because he is a Jew by blood and he is also a Gentile by blood. Because her, his parents are Jew and Gentile. That's why he said to the Jews, I become a Jew. To the Gentile, I become a Gentile. He knew what to do. Hello? So God can use us where we are. Where we have been before. God can use us. And that's the talent that God has given us. God gives us according to the ability that we have. God knows. God sees. Us. Number two. We are not all created equal. Hello? Hello? Some are brighter, some are not. Some are very wise, some are not. Let's face it, right? Some are more talented, some are not. Some are educated, some are not. Because some, some don't have an opportunity to really get that education. Some are handicapped, some are not. I am handicapped now. But sometimes we are born having a handicap. Others have physical defects, some problems. And we could maybe we would say, Is God is God unfair? Why, Lord, do I have this? Why, Lord, am I like this? God is not unfair. Diversity is woven into the body of Christ for a purpose. Hello? God has a purpose in all of these differences we have. God ordained our limitations to show us that we that or that he has no favoritism hello what matters to god is how we use our talents for his glory it doesn't matter how much talent we have because when we use our talents to the lord listen to this when we use our talents to the lord lord's work 
whenever, uh, w whether it's five, whenever it's two, three, seven, or more, what matters is that our rewards are equal, are the same. Listen to this. Listen to what the parable says. In verse 21, the master said, replied to the, the one who have five talents who gained five more. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share to your master's happiness. Now, to the second one who had only two talents but gained more, the master replied the same, gave the same reward. Well done and good for a faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Even though you have small, a little, that, you have only this, this talent. And if you use your talent for the glory of God, you have a reward. But if you have a lot of talents, and also you use those talents for God, the glory of God, still, that same reward that, that the one who had only two or one talent, in whom he used, would have the same reward. Enter into the happiness of your master. You have been faithful. I don't believe this one. That some would say, if you work and you do it double time and you work so hard for the glory of God, you have many crowns. But if you don't work, uh, just sometimes being lazy, you have only one crown, two crowns. I don't believe that. In, in, in heaven, you don't have a lot more. You can see, oh wow, look at that. You have many crowns. Me, I only have two. I only have one. Come on. What matters to God is that how you use your talent. And now, you know what? It's good to see talented people. Can I say this? Dar? <laughs> Can I say this, Dar? You know, well, I know that they're just joking, but... His, his, his uh, brothers would say, oh, we're jealous of Dar. Because he, he got all our talents. <laughs> because even his teacher, Becky Baker, said that, hey, <laughs> Dar had all the talents of his brothers. Uh-oh. Hey, I'm sorry about that. You know what? Sometimes we get jealous seeing people. Oh, how, how I wish I want to sing that way. Right? Oh, how I wish, I wish I can do that too. Oh, how I wish I have a lot of money like, like him. You know, there, there are things that we say, oh, how I wish I would be like him. Now, I want to, to share to you this. Do you want to have more talents? Do you have to have more talents to be used for God's glory? Amen. Amen. Okay, uh, I'll tell you this. The more talents you have, the more ministry and responsibility you also have. Luke 12, 48, in the second part of, of that, that verse, it says, from, from everyone who has given much, much will be demanded. Hello? From the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. Now, most pastors... And of course, as I see it, it seems like most pastors interpret talent in this parable representing money. If I may apply this to Luke chapter 12, verse 48, 
the danger of money is real because the Bible warns us about this. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, it tell, it, it, Paul, Paul teaches uh, or instructed Timothy, his, his, uh, his son in the faith, as he was, uh, Timothy was uh, uh, now being, uh, as a young pastor of, uh, of the Ephesus church. He said, hey, be, tell, tell these people. Tell these people about mm, this warning against money. In, Ma in 1 Timothy 6.10, Paul said to Timothy that the love of money is the root of all, all evil. All evil. And in fact, Matthew 6.24 says, no one can serve God and money. You have to devote to the one and despise the other. Hello? That's what Jesus said. Now, this passage in 1 Timothy chapter 6 fits to Luke chapter 12, verse 48, when it says, For everyone who is given much, much will be demanded. Now, I just want you, I just want to read uh, this passage in 1 Timothy when, when uh, Paul instructed, oops, you're blowing it away. In, instructed uh, when Paul instructed Timothy. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17 up to 19, he said, Paul said, Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our in enjoyment. Command them to do good. Listen, it's not, it's not sin to, to be rich or to have money. But Paul said, Command them to be good, to be rich in, in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasures for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold. Listen to this. So that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. Now, listen to that. So that they may take hold of the, of the life that is truly life. How? Who should... should People who have money to do, this is a talent. It says here to be generous and willing to share. And actually, one of the talents or the gifts given to the church is the giving it is the gift of giving generously romans chapter 12 verse 8 and not all have this gift on talent and this leads us to the third lesson of this parable the third lesson of this parable is we use our talents for God and not for our own selfish desires. We use our talents, or we have to use our talents for God and not for our own selfish purposes. When we said Jesus is Lord, and Jesus is my Lord and Savior, and became uh, and, and became uh, became Christians. We accepted Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We were baptized into the body of Christ through that one Spirit, according to First Corinthians twelve thirteen. Now I'm always going back to that former uh, passage that we had last month. We became His sons and daughters, right? 
We are now sons of God. He is our Father. We have relationship with Him. Father-Son relationship. He loves us and we ought to love Him. We surrendered our lives to Him. Everything that we have has become His. Hello? Not only our lives, but all that we have has become His. Even our eyes, our hands, our feet. Where do we go? Do we go to casino? No. We go to where what God, what God, God be glory will be glorified. Amen. Amen. No, he, he, he is the Lord, meaning he's the master. He's our master. Now here in, in our, the parable of the talents, he, the man he had, these servants have a master. And he entrusted something that he owns to his masters, to his servant. Our talents... Or our talents are what? Some of our talents are our education, what we have, uh, what, what, what we can do for Him, or, or even our, our God-given talents, God-given gifts. Those are our talents that God gave us. Now, our talents is no longer ours to keep, but to be used for His glory, to be used for His service. And look here, there is danger if we don't use our talents for God. Now that we are Christians, we belong to Him. Very dangerous for us to be lazy. And not only that, it's more dangerous if we use it for our selfish desires. I was reading the, uh, the biography of uh, Elvis Presley. And, and as I look at Elvis Presley, looking at his biography, his life, he grew up, I was so shocked, he grew up in an Assembly of God church there at Tupelo, Mississippi. And he began singing in the church and he began being a part of, 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 the, uh, of the choir. He loves gospel music and actually in his young age he, he dreamed of singing gospel songs professionally. He reads the Bible every night and according to, uh, according to his, uh, one of his girlfriend, Dottie, that he, he reads aloud. And he is really a devoted Christian. He was surrounded, actually, he was surrounded by, by church leaders who guided him um, uh, in his career. One of them is evangelist Rick Stanley, his stepbrother. Not only that, his aunt was a preacher, woman preacher. His parents were devoted Christians. Elvis believed that God wanted him to be used, to, to use his talents to help people, to uplift people and bring them to Christ. In the early stages of his career as a singer, God blessed him and became famous. Actually, all his three Grammy Award, uh, Awards that he earned were with his gospel records. Imagine that. And his third Grammy Award was because of his, this song. And you won't believe this. This is song, How Great Thou Art. Wow. And that won the Grammy Awards. He sings gospel songs alongside with secular songs in his concerts to show that uh, to show his faith. Actually, in one of his concerts, early concerts, 
a lady came up to the stage and handed him a crown and said, Elvis, you are the king. But Elvis replied, he replied, no, there is only one king, that is Jesus Christ. I am only a singer. However, as his career went on, he was tempted of fame, glory, and money, drifted away from God, began to use drugs. His talent for his own selfish ambition, purpose, purposes, money, fame, and girls. His life began to fall apart and went to uh, it, it went it, it deteriorated. He got overdosed with prescription drugs, and he was in and out of the hospital when he was in the age of forty in uh, the forties. Even you know, on his uh, latest concerts. He does a concert and then he goes to the hospital and then get get well again. But he had been taking a lot of a lot of the prescription drugs. Actually, in August 16, 1977, he had a cardiac arrest and he died. But before he died, before he died, when he was going in and out of the hospital. There is an evangelist, and this evangelist, uh, I know my wife knows, knows this evangelist, Rex Humbard. This evangelist, Rex Humbard, came to visit him in that hospital. And in fact, he went to a concert with, 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 uh, with Elvis. And right there, Elvis said, Elvis said to Rex Humbard, hey, Rex. You know what? Jesus is coming soon. And I have to get right with God. I have to get right with God. I have sinned. I have sinned. And I have to get right with God. But you know what? Yes, he again dedicated his life to, to, uh, to the Lord. But it's too late because his body deteriorated. And at that day in August, he died. And actually, the first man who visited him before he died, who talked to him, is this evangelist, his stepbrother, Rick Stanley. Some people would say that he's like the old King David the life of King David. But you know what? This what happens. This what happens if we begin to use our talents for our own selfish purpose. I know of an uncle. I have an uncle who was called by God to be an evangelist. But he just refused it. The first first years, he was so he, he went with the evangelist people during those uh, evangel evangelists in, in the Philippines, and they preached. And he had a a vision. He had a vision that he will be used by God in in preaching to a lot of people. But then he said, "I cannot do it because I know that if I will be an evangelist, I won't have no money." I would I, I would be just a poor a, a poor man, and I can't I can't do that. So he went out, and instead of going going to the ministry, he went out and had his business, had a lot of of, of a, a lot a lot of field and a lot a lot of things that he, he wanted, and. He, I know you, you know, my kids know their children. But you know what? He got sick and he, he got a stroke. 
actually we took care of him in, in our in our in our house until he died and he wanted to get back to God and he said oh, oh Lord I I'm here forgive me I want to go back I want to go and preach he renewed his license but never became better he was bedridden and he died friends let us use what we have let us use what we have what is your talent that God has given you listen to this and I want to show you this last person last servant the last servant in this parable and that is in verses I want to read that in verse 20, 24 then the man who had received the one talent came master he said I knew that you are a hard man harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed so I, ha I was afraid and, uh, and went and hid your talent in the ground see then here is your talent belongs to you I'm giving back to you master replied you wicked lazy servant so you knew you so you have not so you knew that you have not sown and gathered where I have not scattered seed well then not well well then you should have put my money on deposit with the banker so that when I return I would have received it back with interest and then so he was lazy he did not use his talent he hid it I don't want to explain all, all, all of this it will take time but the Lord said take the talent away from him give it to the one who has ten talents for everyone who has uh, who has will be given more and he will have an abundance so when we use our talents friends God will give us more and God will give us bless us more amen because it's like this when you give more to the Lord God will bless you more amen if you have more and you give less God will lessen you more <laughs> you want to have more give more you want to enjoy your Christian life come on do more for the work of God and God is going to give you more joy and happiness and contentment in your life and that's a fact. But if you say, ah, I don't want to use my talent. Ah, I don't want because of this, like this. Ah, I don't want this. I don't want this. Is what is happening. So I'll just, I'll just uh, withdraw first, you know. You get so what? Frustrated. You get so uh, you, you get so disappointed. You're just relaxing. And that's why some of us here said, okay, I'm going back. I'm going back. I'm going back. I'm coming back. And I see some of us here did that. Because now you feel so alone. But if you do it, if you would use your talent for the glory of God, your life has a joy and peace in the Lord amen in my conclusion and I will conclude and what's the time it's 12 o'clock praise God in my conclusion a lot of Christians today thought that salvation is like riding on a bus riding on a bus that when uh, when you have Jesus in your life 
you're already assured of entering heaven, just waiting for the bus to reach its destination. So in riding on the bus, what would you do? You sit there and wait, just wait for the bus to stop where your destination is. Sit down and relax. Eat and be merry for tomorrow you die. You can, and, and in the bus, you can do anything inside until Jesus comes back. A lot of Christians thought that way. But according to this parable, listen to this. According to this parable, we were given talents to use for his service until he comes back. Amen. In this parable, it says in the first part, that it's like a man going to a journal who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. Entrusted his property to them. He entrusted talents to all of us. And what we are going to do with it, we have to use it. We have to work for it. We have to do, we are supposed to do something for, for him, for God, for his church. To serve him, to be busy in the talents that as he has given us. We work, we work and we use our talents until he comes back. Amen. Let us not be like the third servant in the parable. And take note, and as I've said, take note of this. Take note of this parable of the talent. In Matthew 25, verse 24, the first one, the first, the first uh, word, it says, again. Now listen to this. Again. Now look at this word. Again. Now, what, this does, what does this point out? He points out, to the parable, the parable that Jesus said before this parable of the talent. And it is the parable of the ten virgins. And this parable of the ten virgins is a parable of, 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 of people, Christians, Christians, who are waiting for the coming of the Lord. But five of them have no oil. Enough oil as they waited. And five of them ha are, are always prepared. And when the master came, the bride came and knocked. Bridegroom came and knocked. Well, the, those, those, uh, the other five, five virgins don't have light. It's dark. But the other five entered into that wedding banquet. Now, that word said, again, it is like a man. And what is that? Again, what is that? The kingdom of heaven. Because in chapter 25, verse 21, at that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins. And then in verse 25, verse 24, again, it is like a man. The kingdom of heaven is like a man. Hello? Therefore, I would say this. It's not just like riding a bus when you have Jesus Christ and just wait for the coming of Jesus Christ to take us. We as Christians believers had to work had to work amen. amen had we must use what we have for him and this is a challenge to all of us what can you do to help in the mission of Jesus Christ I was misquoted or misinterpreted years ago 
when I said in this congregation that the ministry of Jesus is not over yet. It's simply because when Jesus came here and started his church, he said to his disciples, go and make disciples. Go and do the same that I have done to you. And share the gospel. Share me. Share salvation to the whole world. And this is what we are completing as a church. And we cannot do that if we don't work together. Hello? So I encourage you, even in little things that you have, the talent, the small things that you have, you know what? You can just be a cleaner of this place or some kind of things. But God, as you do it, as you are become faithful, God will give you more. God will give you more talent. And someday you'll be, you'll be, maybe you'll be here and standing. Maybe you'll be, have that boldness through the power of the Holy Spirit. And you go out there and share Jesus Christ. And people will get blessed through you. But if you are not faithful in small things how can you be faithful in bigger things Amen. hallelujah Amen. I know of a man in the Philippines one of my, my students in, in, in the Bible school he, he had the brain he was good in, 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 um, in class but he had that big tantrum and he had that um, ha, ha, hot headed, just like me, huh? Hot headed and he, and the, right there. He, he was, he was, he, he was uh, thrown out of, uh, he was suspended for a year. You cannot come to the Bible school, you're suspended in one year. And he, in that suspension, he was taken into a custody of uh, of a church where we call how, what how how do we call that uh, like you know, to show if he really has a calling from calling and and then you know what the pastor did to him what the pastor did to him is he did not go he was not there in the church to preach or to help the ministry he was there just to sit down and clean the clean the clean the church that's all okay you're going to clean the church for one year and not only clean the church but he would feed the pigs of of, of the of the pastor that's all he did but he became faithful did exactly did uh, God he really did everything and he was so faithful and the church was always clean the church was so uh, every time uh, there's service it's always clean and and there the business of the pastor of the piggery boom because of him wow but you know what the pastor saw him and he began to say, okay, you can do this in the church. You can do this. You know, right now, I've seen him. He went, came back to the, to, to, the, to the Bible school and he, be, he became a changed man. Right now, he's one of the top leaders of the Assemblies of God right there in Northeastern Luzon District Council. It's because he was faithful in that small things. Small, just a little thing. Friends, what can you do to help in the fulfillment of the Great Commission? Reaching out to people. Maybe you would say, I don't have any talent. You can start from scratch. You can start from that one talent that you have. Maybe a talent of cleaning. 
maybe a talent that I want to show you. Okay? The talent of praying. That's if you have you have that desire to pray, a talent of praying. I'm I'm not trying to say promoting that, hey, you have to come whether you like it or not. But you know, I'm encouraging you. You don't have any talent yet, come come and pray every Tuesday. We pray for people. Hello, and those people who, who come during prayer meeting, we pray for people. We didn't pray for ourselves. We don't pray for, Lord, bless me and bless me. Lord, I need money. No, we pray for people. Amen. And I believe why we are here today. Some of you know this. Why you are here today. We prayed for you Amen. when you took vacation. <laughs> We prayed for you. Even in our prayer meeting, we always pray for you. Even when you're out, when you get absent in the church, we have Tuesday, we pray for what's happening to him. We pray for you. And if we all do that, oh, glory to God. The power pack of this church will happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What else? What else? What other talents that we have to love people? Because we have the love of Christ. By sharing our lives to others. Sharing our faith to others. Showing the goodness of God. What else? Giving. Whatever we have. Amen. If you have this talent, you have whatever small things. Oh, I don't have money to, to share uh, food for today. You know what? I remember when I was, uh, we were pioneering a, a, a church in Ordaneta in a slum area. Just taking a two or three, two or three uh, uh, small sardines. And giving it to people right there. And we eat together. And that worked. And that family that I always visited. With a sardines. Or with, uh, with, with mongo beans. Two of, their, two of their daughters became workers of the church. One of them became the pastor. See? Small things. We can do a lot of things. We have some talents. Small. But let us use it. For the glory of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's give a clap offering to the Lord. Amen.